when we think of the immense universe, planet Earth is actually a very small, tiny part. And this is the tiny part we all share. So how do we manage it together? How do we accept the idea that we cannot build borders? Well, we can trace easily the borders between the African countries, 54 countries, back to the 19th century, when the Europeans met in Berlin to divide the continent. But those borders in Africa and many parts of the world have no meaning. The coronavirus didn't apply for a visa to travel across the globe. So we need to rethink the idea of borders, the idea of separation, and instead think of how we can come together as one human family, as a community. But it's not only us, the human, who matter. When thinking of ecosystem, we have also the animals, the nature, the trees, that are very much part of our lives. How do we manage our existence in relation to the rest of the environment? We need to think of a world of equality and inclusion. All the voices must count. A new education system that will value what is called indigenous knowledge system. Here I'm not saying that one way of learning, one type of content is better than the other, but they all must be assessed. They all must be considered in our search for a different world. We must question all those ways of learning, the content, the curriculum, the learners, those who can teach, we must assess all those. And forget about this hierarchy of the content, of knowledge. And here this is where African women will have a voice because they have been marginalized, excluded, and their exclusion can be traced also the process of marginalizing them, of making them artificially voiceless while they are active participants in the process of life, in the process of knowledge production, in the process of the utilization of, of knowledge. We need to drop this whole idea of aid. The idea of aid that has positioned the African continent as a recipient of the generosity of everybody else. Africa contributes to the world advancement today. Although it was reduced in the context of colonization to producing raw materials that are purchased at a low price and which is used to produce the commodities that are sold across the globe whether we're talking about computers, cars. When you touch your computer, you must think of the Democratic Republic of Congo, whose citizens have been suffering while they have been endowed by so much in terms of natural resources. But then what do they receive in exchange? So even if they are producing only raw material, well, it should not be actually be considered only. It's critical. Without that, there won't be any transformation. If anything, this virus has shown us that even the most powerful countries, economies, military might, they have being humbled by this, this little virus you can't even see with your own eyes. It should make us think, have some introspection 
what really matters, how we can best use our knowledge, our resources, which indicates, urges us to use knowledge for the human advancement, to improve human experiences, so that everybody can have a sense of the meaning of his or her experience, so that everybody can have a sense of hope Hopelessness has created a lot of problems in the world. The migration, huge population living where they, they come from, is never easy to migrate because there's more in human life than acquisition of material resources that are better on the other side. How can the majority of the people feel comfortable to stay where they are. Give them hope. Hope is critical in human experience. Without hope, it's difficult to imagine the future. It means we have to change the system of education. We have to change this idea of competitiveness. Competition is good only if it fulfills two goals from my perspective. One, compete against yourself to do the very best. What is the very best that you can do with the endowment that you received at birth? So that's a good positive competition. The second is competing to do the best for the world. So, but the competition to accumulate wealth by individual, by some state, to create those divides within even the most powerful countries where many people have literally nothing. They are struggling. We need to close the divides. We need to come together as a human family but we need to develop the critical thinking. What is the finality of creating this instrument, of inventing these machines? So critical thinking and using them as a means for the advancement of the world, for everybody, boys and girls, and whoever identified differently, or of us human as members of this great family so that we can use our respective capabilities to contribute to creating a new world. We need to think of the future generation. So we need to reform, rethink our education system to educate a new generation that would automatically identify as members of one human family. After all, the world we have today is the result of human creations. We have the capacity. If we have the will, if we have the enlightenment that we can have another world that can be better, we have that capacity to create this world and this little virus may be helping us think of a new turning point.